Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Amy from Tuition Up and today we're going to learn how to write a spine poem. Firstly, we're going to explore what a noun is and what an adjective is. So a noun, if you don't already know, is a name of a person, a place or a thing. It's quite easy to decipher. If it's a proper noun, usually it has a capital letter. Um, if it's just a, a regular noun, a common noun, then it usually has a the or an an or an a at the front. It would make sense with those at the front. Um, an adjective is a describing word, so it tells you what something's like. So we're going to have a roll of this dice here, first of all, see what it lands on. So the word it lands on is sun. What do you think? Adjective or noun? What do you think? Yep, it is a noun because it's the name of a thing. Lovely, let's do it again and see what we get this time. So the next one is May. What do you think? It's got a capital letter here. So that tells us that it's a proper noun. Okay, next one. Clever. And um, if something or somebody is described as being clever, then it is an adjective. Lovely, let's do one of the blue ones. Um, and this one, cold, what do you think? Noun or adjective? Yep, so it's describing how something feels. So it's a description word, so that is an adjective. So what is a spine poem then? Well, let's start with the word spine. Where have you already seen this word? What do you know this word as? Yeah, so the spine is the name of your, your backbone. It's given to your background that goes all the way from, from the top of, your, uh, top of your neck all the way down to like just above your bum here, your coccyx at the bottom. Okay, and we can think about that and then relate it to this poem. So as we look at this poem, you can see actually that um, it's been divided up. So we've got some words here that are in a kind of like bluey gray color and they go all the way down throughout the poem. Now they're not straight like your backbone is, but they do run top to bottom all the way through the poem. And then the poem here is built around this spine of words. Now I've rubbed it out so we can see those spine of words a little bit clearer. What kind of words are they? Well, if we think about what we did at the beginning, they're all nouns, aren't they? They're all names of things, parts of the body that the cat has. And then built around it, we've got expansion on those nouns, so description about what's going on. How are we going to write a spine poem then? Well, first of all, we need to have something that we're going to write about. So you might want to find something in your room now that you want to have a go of writing a spine poem about. It could be a picture, it might be an object, um, even could be a piece of your artwork or anything at all. So for my example, I'm going to use this owl that I've got here. And for the spine, we need to pick out, first of all, the nouns. So we're going to look at the object or my picture. And I want you to look at yours and I want you to pick out the nouns that you can find. So looking at my owl here, we've got eyes, feathers, beak, wings, legs and talons. We can't actually see the talons, but we know they are down there. Now these nouns are going to form the spine of our poem, just like we had before with the cat. These words are going to form the centerpiece, the spine that runs all the way down. What we need to do is we need to brainstorm some adjectives. And how I like to do this is just choose one of the nouns to focus on, otherwise it gets a bit overwhelming. So we just choose one beak. I'll put it in this like little rectangle that I've got here. Um, and then I want you to think about the beak, so have a good look at it. Um, try and think about all your senses. What, what is the beak like? What does it look like? kind of noise might it make? How does it feel? Anything you can think of. You might be able to think of similes if you're kind of more advanced. You might be able to come up with a few adjectives. So I've got a few here, sharp and dangerous, like a knife. And then I've got this verb as well, cutting. And then we're going to put them together to make a sentence. His dangerous beak, like a knife. The lines on his feathers, so young. Powerful yet delicate, his wings slice through the air staring with lemon eyes, spotting the tiniest of mice, sharp, grimy talons, belly as full as a bear. The thing I really like about making poetry live with children in a group is that everyone gets to share their ideas and then we can go back at the end and what we can do is we can reflect on our work and we can mark our work and, and that's what we did. So we came up with um, two really cool things that we liked about this poem and one thing that we thought we could improve next time if we were to do it again. 
and it was different for every, everybody. I might like something different to somebody else. It's a really lovely activity because it celebrates what we've done well and then it gets children thinking in a, in a positive way about things that they could improve on. Do you want to join a free live lesson? Every week at 10 o'clock on a Friday, I teach a free live lesson. Everyone is welcome. It's most suitable for ages nine plus. We focus on English and um, lessons not dissimilar to what you've seen today. I will put a link in the description below. You can copy and paste that into your browser and it will take you to the place where you can join. If you've enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe and share with anyone else that you think would enjoy these videos. And I'll see you next time. Bye.